Hey guys, in this video, let's talk about feature selection. Let's start with looking at some interview questions. Why use feature selection? How do you select features in general? How to do feature selection if you have 10,000 features? How to calculate feature importance? In this video, we are going to talk about what is feature selection, and then we will dive into three feature selection methods, intrinsic methods, filter methods, and wrapper methods. So by the end of this video, you will have a very good understanding on feature selection. All right, let's start with feature selection. What is feature selection? Feature selection is a process to select a subset of the original features for model training. It's usually used as a pre-processing step before doing the actual learning. As you will learn later on in this video, there are some models that they can select features automatically in the training process. So that's why I said it's usually as a pre-processing step. It's not always a pre-processing step. One thing worth noting is that there's no best feature selection methods. And there's no one feature selection method that they can use for all different problems and data sets. It depends on the problem and data set. So we need to choose the appropriate feature selection method for a specific problem. So why we need to select features? Why feature selection is important? As we have learned in the video on dimensionality reduction, feature selection is just one method to reduce the dimensionality of the data. So it has some advantages similar to the advantages of dimensionality reduction. First of all, it avoids the curse of dimensionality. Secondly, feature selection improves predictive performance and interpretability of models. By selecting a subset of features from all the features that are available to us, the model training time will be reduced and the computational efficiency will be improved. It also reduces generalization error of the model by removing irrelevant features or noise. On top of that, it improves the predictive power of the model if a model suffers from overfitting. So these are the advantages of feature selection. Now, before we talk about different feature selection methods, I want to emphasize that domain knowledge is important to select features. This means that we have a good understanding of the business problem, and we know which features should matter and which ones don't. This could begin by consulting with domain experts and also doing exploratory data analysis EDA. So building up the domain knowledge is critical before we even think about which are the methods or algorithms we can use to select features. Now let's dive into feature selection methods. And there are three methods I want to cover. These are methods that are commonly used in machine learning projects. The first category of feature selection methods is intrinsic methods. They are also called embedded methods or implicit methods. These are the methods that have feature selection naturally embedded with the training process. As you can see from this diagram, we have a set of all features available to us, and then we generate a subset of features. Then we use a learning algorithm and performance evaluation to help us continue selecting a subset of features. And the subset of features that is selected by the learning algorithm is considered as the best subset of features. So the idea is that we leverage the learning algorithm to help us select features automatically without using any external tools. So which learning algorithms can help us do this? Tree-based models, for example, decision trees, random forest, gradient boosted trees, the basic unit is decision trees. And as we all know, decision trees search for the best feature to split the node so that the outcomes are more homogeneous with each new partition. And if a feature is not used in any split, it can be considered as independent of the target variable. So tree-based models have feature selection embedded with the training process. Another example is regularization models. We know that L1 regularization penalizes many of the estimated coefficients to zero and only keeps features with non-zero coefficients. So we can consider models that can leverage L1 regularization such as linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines as embedded method to select features automatically. Now let's summarize the pros and cons of intrinsic methods or embedded methods. First of all, they are fast because feature selection is embedded with the model training process. Secondly, there's no external feature selection tool is needed because it's done automatically. It also provides a direct connection between feature selection and the objective function, for example, maximize information gain in decision trees 
and maximize likelihood function in logistic regression, which makes it easier to make informed choice. However, the downside of intrinsic method is that it's model dependent or algorithm dependent, and the choice of algorithms is limited. So if these algorithms are inappropriate for a particular problem or data set, we should not consider using intrinsic method to select features. Now let's move forward to filter methods, another commonly used feature selection method. Filter methods select features that correlate well with the target variable, and the evaluation is independent of the algorithm. As you can see in this diagram, we have a set of all features available to us, and we use filter methods to select the best subset of features. Then we use this best subset of features to fit in the learning algorithm, and then we evaluate the performance of the learning algorithm. The search is performed only once. Two commonly used filter methods are univariate statistical analysis and feature importance-based feature selection. Univariate statistical analysis analyzes how each feature correlates with the target variable and selects the ones with the higher correlations. So we evaluate the correlation of each feature with the target variable and select the features with the highest correlations. Feature importance-based feature selection refers to methods that use feature importance scores to select features to keep or delete. Some models use coefficients as feature importance, for example, linear regression and logistic regression. The higher the coefficients means that the more important the features are. There are also models use impurity-based feature importance or information gain-based feature importance, such as tree-based models like random forest. We can look at the decrease in impurity or increase information gain for each feature to obtain the feature importance. Then we select features with the highest feature importance. So what are some pros and cons of filter methods? Filter methods are simple and fast. They can be effective at capturing the large trends in the data. However, they tend to select redundant features. And because each feature is evaluated independently, they ignore relationships among features. Finally, let's look at another common use feature selection method, the wrapper method. The wrapper method refers to those methods that have an iterative process that repeatedly add subsets of features to the model and then use the resulting model performance to guide the selection of the next subset. Here's a diagram that shows how the wrapper method works. We have a set of all features at the beginning, and then we generate a subset of features. We use a learning algorithm to select the next subset of features. As you can see, this is an iterative process. Once we select the best subset of features, then we consider the feature selection process is completed. One common use wrapper method is sequential feature selection. It's a family of greedy search algorithms that are used to automatically select a subset of features that are most relevant to the problem. Secondly, has the implementation and some examples on sequential feature selection. So feel free to check them out. But here, let's go over two types of sequential feature selection, forward sequential feature selection and backward sequential feature selection. Forward sequential feature selection iteratively finds the best new feature to add to the set of selected features. So we start with zero feature and find the one feature that maximizes a cross-validated score when model is trained on this single feature. Once that the first feature is selected, we repeat the procedure by adding a new feature to the set of selected features. The process stops when the desired number of selected features is reached. Another sequential feature selection, the backward feature selection, does it in an opposite way. It starts with all the features and sequentially remove features from the set until the desired number of features is reached. Finally, let's look at the pros and cons of the wrapper method. The wrapper method searches for a wider variety of feature subsets than other methods because each time it considers features that are already selected when choosing a new feature. However, the wrapper method has the most potential to overfit the features to the training data and it has significant computation time when the number of features is large. 